In a significant tactical victory, Ukrainian pilots from the 425th Separate Assault Battalion Scala successfully eliminated a group of Russian invaders who were attempting to advance on motorcycles near the village of Vokaratine. This operation highlights the increasing use of motorcycles by Russian forces for rapid assaults, a strategy that has seen mixed success on the battlefield. The use of motorcycles has become a notable trend among Russian troops, aiming to provide speed and mobility across the rugged terrain of eastern Ukraine. However, this tactic has also made them vulnerable targets. In a similar incident, operators from the K-2 Battalion of the 54th Separate Mechanized Brigade intercepted and eliminated two Russian soldiers on a motorcycle. These quick-strike capabilities of the Ukrainian units have proven effective in neutralizing such threats. Another dramatic footage has surfaced showing a Russian BMP, heavily laden with troops, traveling through a mined area. The vehicle inevitably detonates an anti-tank mine, resulting in a powerful explosion that likely killed or wounded the crew. Surviving soldiers, attempting to escape the wreckage, were quickly neutralized by Ukrainian drone-dropped munitions, illustrating the relentless nature of the conflict. In separate operational success, operators from the 3rd Regiment of Special Forces identified and targeted a Russian digital radio relay station, the R-416GM, a crucial component for battlefield communications. Adopted by the Russian Army in 2018, this mobile station enhances the efficiency of radio relay units in the field. Ukrainian forces utilized loitering munitions to strike the relay tower delivering significant damage to its technical components. Although the system did not explode dramatically, the strike likely disrupted Russian communication capabilities. <laughs> Meanwhile in Kharkiv, the newly opened Russian offensive front has encountered stiff Ukrainian resistance, causing the offensive to stall. Russian engineers are now attempting to fortify their positions, constructing defensive lines to hold the limited ground gain. Ukrainian FPV drones have been effective in targeting and destroying Russian construction vehicles, impeding their fortification efforts. Footage reportedly captured near Vovchansk, just 2.5 kilometers from the Russian border, shows multiple direct hits on these lightly armored construction units. The situation at the front remains intense and fluid, with 41 combat clashes reported with Russian troops since the beginning of the day. The Korakiv direction is particularly tense. Detailed reports from the Ukrainian sources reveal that yesterday, Russian forces launched a total of three missile strikes using four missiles, conducted 66 air strikes, and carried out more than 3,800 attacks, including 100 from rocket salvo systems. According to the latest reports from the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Russian casualties in the past 24 hours have risen significantly, with 1,250 soldiers lost in action. Ukrainian countermeasures have also destroyed 48 artillery systems and 8 tanks, underscoring the escalating tool of the conflict. The Russian military has maintained its aggressive advance, making significant headway in key areas. Over the past day, Russian forces have advanced near Rozdolivka and successfully occupied Novopokrovsky. Intense battles continue near Hlyboki and Novovojani. The Russian army's tactical advancements in the Pokrovsky direction are strategically significant. Retired Lieutenant General IHOR Romanenko, speaking on Suspilny, highlighted that these movements could potentially enable Russian forces to return to the kramatorsk slovyansk agglomeration in the north and Vulater in the south. Romanenko noted that the Russians have been attempting to capture Volater for over a year, incurring heavy losses in personnel and equipment. He emphasized the Ukrainian forces' current shortage of attack means and ammunition, particularly in artillery and aviation, as well as understaffing in combat units. Military journalist Bodin Miroshnikov underscored the critical nature of the ongoing battles in the Pokrovsky. 
Korakivsky, Chesivyorsky, and Siversky directions. Miroshnikov pointed out that the Russian forces have capitalized on the early lack of aid from the U.S., leading to significant advances. He stressed that despite the aid eventually being allocated, the complexity of the situation means immediate results are not feasible. Without the aid, battles for key cities like Pokrovsk and Kostyantinivka might have already occurred. The enemy's prolonged campaign, which began in October 2023, has made the current situation extremely challenging. In a notable development, soldiers from the 68th Separate Jaeger Brigade successfully repelled an attack in the Pokrovsk direction, destroying eight Russian tanks and eight infantry fighting vehicles, IFGs. Meanwhile, Russian President Vladimir Putin claimed that nearly 700,000 Russian servicemen are currently engaged in combat in Ukraine. On June 14, Putin reiterated his purported readiness for peace talks, contingent on Ukraine withdrawing its troops from all regions occupied by Russia, which the Kremlin now claims as its own territory. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky dismissed Putin's terms as a revival of Nazism. International reactions to Russia's actions remain severe. Leaders of the Group of Seven, G7, meeting at a summit in Italy, issued a stern warning to Russia regarding the use of weapons of mass destruction, including nuclear weapons. In their joint declaration, the G7 leaders expressed deep concern over Russia's nuclear rhetoric and the reported use of chemical agents against Ukrainian forces. They reiterated that any use of chemical, biological, radiological, or nuclear weapons by Russia would have serious consequences.